Welcome to At Your Service, the service management podcast on the CRM Audio Network with your hosts, Sean Tabor and Scott LaFonte. Happy New Year and welcome to another episode of At Your Service, the service management podcast on the CRM Audio Network. Uh, my name is Sean Tabor, and as always, I have with me my co-host, Scott LaFonte. Hey, Scott. Hey, Sean. Good evening. How are you on this chilly evening in Tampa? You know, it is a little chilly. It is a little chilly, and uh, it's, it's like 40-something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's 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 going to get colder. It actually had some snow in Florida this week. Just yeah. Happy New Year yeah. to everybody for the, <laughs> in Florida for that one, huh? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh you know, I, I'm excited right off the bat um, because we have a new sponsor. Awesome. Who did do we you have? Know that? I did not. I, you did not know that because I did not tell you about it ahead of time. But um, our new sponsor is the CRM User Group, otherwise known as CRM UG. The User Group for Dynamics 365 and CRM Community is powered by users for users and specializes in the delivery of member-driven education, networking, and events to help you maximize your current Microsoft Dynamics investment. And, you know, I've, I've been involved a lot with uh, CRMUG, and I can tell you there's a lot of programs and uh, seminar webinars and opportunities for you to learn a lot of different things with CRM UG. Um, and you know, by all means, please go out to their website, CRM UG and check CRM UG.com and check that out. And, uh, so Scott, have you, have you been to a CRM UG summit or a CRM UG event? I have not yet had the pleasure to, uh, to attend one. Uh, I've heard uh, nothing but great things about those and, uh, definitely looking forward to doing that in the future here. I have been both a presenter and a uh, participant, uh, and I can tell you that there's a ton of information every CRMUG, um, whether it's Summit, Focus, or one of the local chapter events. Um, it, there's a there's a ton of information and opportunity to learn things, and uh, with the special interest groups that they have. Um, <laughs> There's, there's one for customer service. Um, there's one for field service right now. And I believe soon there may be one for um, project service as well. Um, well we're going to be getting a little more involved in, in CRM UG for 2018 as a, as a podcast team. Uh, Sarah is already um, a CRM UG all-star, Sarah Jelinek, um, our, our, our Dynamics 365 diva. She's uh she's already a CRM UG All Star, which is a pretty pretty awesome award to uh, get. Hopefully, uh, someday I could I could achieve that kind of uh, uh, honor. So, and, uh, so she's the Jedi in that case, and you are the Padawan. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh absolutely, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so yeah, and uh, it's uh, for those of you out there who are interested in participating in events like CRM UG Focus. Um, the call for agenda topics is out there. So uh, again, check them out at crmug.com. Absolutely. And, and that brings up a good point, Sean. I mean, if you have a great concept or an idea for any content for CRMUG or even, you know, our, our podcast that you would like to cover, by all means, um, explore those possibilities because, you know, you may think, oh, someone else is aware of this uh, it's probably already been done. There's no harm in, in putting that information out there because new things and new ideas and new technology, everything is changing so rapidly that it it just really helps if we all can really just put that information out there and benefit from it from a greater CRM uh, perspective. Absolutely. It, you know, and it's, it's a new year and, uh, I, I, I was always in the past kind of stymied by the the eagerness and the excitement to contribute to the community, but I I was never sure if uh, my content was going to be the same as someone else's. 
Well, you know, there's a lot of, especially nowadays, like you said, there's a lot of different spins and different takes you can, you can, uh, given a, a, a topic, um, when you're talking about it and, uh, you know, your, your approach may, may speak to, uh, others that, that someone might not have reached, you know? So, uh, I, I agree with you, get, get out there and, uh, contribute, whether it's CRM UG, whether it's, uh, on the community boards, whether it's on Facebook forums, um, by all means, uh, participate. It, it's going to make the whole community better in the end. So let me, let me ask you, Scott, uh, 2018 brand new year. It is. Um, how did, how did you do, uh, holiday wise? Uh, we had, we had a nice little week vacation. Um, I managed to, uh, only have to uh, interact with you one time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Paid, for, you know, just for the record, uh, listeners, uh, I, I bought lunch. You did buy uh, lunch. It's possible. It's possible that I could buy lunch. Um, you may, you know, if you see me at a CRMUG uh, event, I uh, I may not always be known for the the open wallet, but uh, this time it, it happened. But, um, so any any notable items from the holiday break for you? You know, I, I not really the break per se. It was it was a nice to kind of decompress and uh and really reflect on you know all the work that's that's that we've done this past year and of course all the changes within uh, dynamics. I think the one thing that that I did enjoy, which is right before the break, was the uh, the the trip to your wife's school to be Santa and uh, and the Grinch. I, I oh, think that's yeah. the most memorable. Yeah, that was fun for for those of you out there. We'll put a uh, we we did post a picture on our on each of our Twitter feed, but uh, yeah, we my my wife is a kindergarten teacher in Tampa, and. Um, Scott and I went to her school and Scott was Santa. Uh, how that happened, I don't know. I, I but, don't uh, either. Scott became Santa and I was the Grinch. Well, no, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> you did uh, make yeah. a kid cry. I did. Um, I didn't mean to, but I did. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, I uh, I gave the uh, administration some grief for keeping my wife in school until the Friday before Christmas. So uh, as the Grinch, so that that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, and I, you know, it the kids loved it. They sent us um, thank you cards and you know handwritten thank you cards. We 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 uh, talked to the kindergarten, first grade, uh, and uh, some of the pre K classes. So it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's a neat way to give back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the good thing the kids were younger because they would have picked up on the fact that I did not have the right color eyebrows. Next year, <laughs> next year, you know, duly noted. We need some some gray gray slash white eyebrows. Yeah. But uh, so those who see the picture will will get a chuckle out of that. I think the other big thing, right, for the for the holidays was just spending time with family. You know, for me, it's not. I, it's funny how as you, when you're younger, it's all it's all about the presents. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love I love gifts. And I, I got the one gift that I wanted, which was the uh, Apple AirPods. And mm-hmm. my wife got me some very uh, other memorable gifts that I I've enjoyed. But for me, it's it's about spending time with family and uh, just spending that quality time and, and just relaxing. I It was nice not to have to drive anywhere this year. So that was good. Yeah, that's always How nice. About- I, I hate driving on the holidays. Yeah. How about you, Sean? How, how you know anything memorable besides uh, our our little exploration to the to elementary school? Well, you know, I tell you, I did spend some good quality time with the family, but uh, I did get. Well, actually, I do have a story. My daughter got a Google Home Mini for Christmas, and she loves it. Right, my daughter uh, is in college, and she just loves it having a blast. Now I have, um, I have a, a, well, how do I say this? A device that would, uh, answer, uh, to, uh, a name, uh, let's call her Madam A. So I don't 
set off uh, <laughs> folks uh, devices at home. Um, we have uh, the the main device, you know, the big the big device downstairs, and I have in my office uh, the little Echo. And uh, basically, at this point, I, the the biggest thing that it does for me right now is um, turn on my light in my office. It's about it. So it it, it controls a Wemo uh, uh, plug, smart plug, and uh, but every pretty much every question I ask it, it I, he's she's gonna have to work on that or something you know so um now the one thing i have been able to get her to do is uh if i ask her to she will play um crm audio from tune in so that's nice and uh if i set an alarm i can get uh alec baldwin to wake me up very gently and that's nice <laughs> is and he that, playing trump oh, no he, he 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 tells me um uh, the early bird gets the worm and he's already gotten the bird because he's that early. So, wow. Yeah. So the, I like that, but uh, I became, uh, we're a Chromecast family for our streaming, uh, on our TVs. So I became increasingly jealous as the, uh, vacation went on about the Google mini Google home mini. And, um, my wife ended up getting me one. So right now in my office, I have uh, the Echo, I have the Google Home Mini, and I have uh, Cortana in the embodiment of my Xbox One. So, there we go. That's the Google. <laughs> he heard me. Daddy. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, hey, well. Echo, say hello. Hi there. There you go. And um, and then I also have Cortana on the Xbox One. Now, I tried some I tried some experiments, you know, over the break. And um, for these devices, Cortana was not the the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I think that's really because it was on the Xbox One. And there's limited functions that she can do. Okay. The between the uh, Madame A device and the Big G, I found the Big G has a lot more conversational abilities, a lot more interaction in a in a way that's comfortable, normal, right? Absolutely. We have the big G downstairs and I'll probably get the little mini G mm -hmm. uh, in my office. And I wake up and I go down there and I say, tell me about my day. Plays the news, tells me what's on my calendar. Um, you know, even when I go upstairs, we have a, a um, French bulldog that's just crazy. So we, he stays downstairs and mm -hmm. when I'm upstairs working. I have to put on sounds so he doesn't hear everything. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have the big G play relaxation sounds for him. Right. Calms him down. Right. It's perfect. Now are they specific dog relaxation sounds? No, it's like, it's all nature sounds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it sounds like it's something like the, in the city you would hear traffic. Um, it, it's just a, a bunch of mix. I have it play during the holidays. We're playing Pandora um, music on there, you know, Christmas music. Uh, I have it hooked up to my alarm system, the garage door, the my iris to control the lights. Uh, right. So it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty pretty robust. So you have a lot more smart home stuff than I do. I just have the two plugs, um, mainly because uh, my wife does not want to talk to the devices. Uh, she's not a big fan, um, and uh, but she was impressed with uh, little G. Um, she did think that so was she's, cool. she's coming around. She's coming yeah, well, around. She, she takes her, she takes a while, a while to, to get onto the new trends, but, um, but yeah, she's like, a late adopter versus an early yeah, adopter. Yeah. Like she, <laughs> like she's now, uh, she just now 
probably about three or four months ago, really got into using a tablet. Whereas before that was just silly. Right. So it, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. So I've been looking at that as a, it's definitely for the home. Uh, it looks like voice is one of those, um, instruction devices for uh, automation, right? I was trying to see if that would be reflective of like a manufacturing or industrial situation. I don't really think so. Um, I think automation through IFTTT, um, through just regular IOT um, and, and, device driven automation is is maturing in that space but i think it's going to be more the mixed reality augmented reality um space that's going to drive that as opposed to um spoken language i think yeah i i I would agree i think we're we're still a little uh, ways away from really using this technology, especially, you know, I mean, we talk about connected field service and we talk about, you know, having devices, you know, providing us with details so we can see, we can be proactive in, in monitoring those. And, and, uh, I know there was a discussion with on LinkedIn. So if anyone's been on LinkedIn and, and is connected to Ben Vollmer, um, he bought an invoke over the holiday and was asking about, you know, ways to use this with Dynamics 365, particularly with field service. And I do see it being applicable at some point. We just need to get there. And then, of course, where, where are the scenarios? What industries um, would that would that be uh, helpful with? You know, it might be helpful with schedulers, for example, trying to find out where, you know, Sean is on his on his day with his work orders. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. So I think the technology is getting there with the rapid pace of innovation. We might get there sooner than, than we think. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't want to hold my breath yet because I, um, right now, of course, when you, when you talk to any of these devices, sometimes depending on what you say, uh, it doesn't understand you right. or it doesn't provide the right information. So it's, it's still think that w- it's going to be refined. Right. And, and I think it's got to be it's not it's it's not enough to just have the the feedback. We like when you ask it a question and it answers, it has to be in a in a space where the it's an actionable response. Right. So whether it's yeah. whether it's speaking to you from your handheld and then you can take an action on your handheld um, or if you're in an office situation and you're for example, talking to Cortana and being able to tell her to, to, you know, execute the next step in the process or to create uh, a work order or to reroute that work order, you know, doing, doing the things that, that right now we would do through drag and drop on a, on a schedule board, for example, it, it would have to be very easy, very seamless and very dependable before I would think voice would be that that trigger mechanism for a lot of automation in uh, in a manufacturing uh, space, especially yeah, especially I, on the yeah. on, a, on the assembly line. You're you're never going to be able to do that because it's too loud. Yeah, exactly. And and right now, right, it, I mean, you don't get that that feedback or that actionable item. So right now, it's just more asking questions and it's spitting out information. When we get to that point, like you said, where you can actually tell it to do something in an application like like dynamics 365, then that's something where I I think organizations might look at that and say, where can I apply this Mm -hmm. uh, in my organization? And I think even right now, I I think people would be hesitant to do so because it's just, you know, it's, it's more hands-off. And and right now you see a lot of organizations where they're relying more on automation, but from my perspective, you know, where do we draw the line between having systems do everything versus having that oversight, 
right, to make sure everything's working. You know, we don't, I'm still the firm believer that there still needs to be that human interaction and that human involvement, right, just to make sure things are going well and also provide that feedback to people in the organization to say, okay, what you're doing well, what you what needs improvement. Right. If we start relying on computers to do that, you know, it kind of takes away that human interaction, yep. that touchy feeling. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. It, it, but for right now, um, these devices are, are pretty, pretty cool for the, for home automation, um, for, um, really just, it makes it makes some, some tasks much easier, but, uh, others, it does kind of complicate it a little bit, but you know, now if I can tell it to open the back door and let the dogs out in this weather, fantastic. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of sad cause we are in Florida and, uh, it's like 42 degrees and we're freaking out. Like it's blizz blizzard con, you know, 2018 anyway. Um, so with the new year, 2018, uh, we, you know, we, we, we met over uh, the break. We, we had some conversations about what we wanted to do, uh, as a podcast as, uh, and, and how we wanted to contribute to the community. Um, I think we have a lot of good ideas. Uh, and, uh, what do you think about sharing some of them with the uh, audience now? I think, that'd be, I think that'd be a great idea. I think let's get folks excited for 2018. All right. You know, they're, everyone's waking up from the food and, and potentially alcohol coma yep. over the holidays and new year. So let's, let's get them something excited. Indeed. Indeed. So the first thing I would say is if you haven't noticed already, we have launched a companion blog to or actually a companion site to the podcast um you can now access uh, written articles from our team uh, myself scott and sarah on the at your service pod.com website um and again that is a companion site to the podcast um we are still linked we you, you're still going to get your your episodes at crm audio our CRM dot audio. Um, and we want to keep that that way. Um, but this companion site is going to give you more information on some of the things that we talked about. Um, I could see us going forward, uh, posting show notes, uh, up there with a link back to CRM audio, um, to, to listen to the, to the episode. Um, so that'll, that'll be happening, but we've already gotten a number of blog posts, uh, on the, uh, at your service site. And uh, you're you're really you're really burning it up there, Mr. Lafonte. I I, I uh, I'm trying I'm trying I I actually posted one I think what about a week before the holidays yep. about uh, unified uh, resource scheduling yep. universal resource scheduling excuse yep. me uh, and about the update that was in early December yep. and then a, the day after I posted it there was a a second update yeah. Uh, so, so I uh, I went through all of those uh, those notes and details from from Microsoft and and wrote an update. Yep. Uh, it, it, uh, based on the scenarios that I am familiar with. Yep. Right. And and one of the things that I want to do once we have the update um, for that for universal resource scheduling is provide updates on that additional functionality and enhancements. Uh, to the area. And, and the one thing I want to note is, I mean, if you look at it and we talked about this, I think a while back is this rapid innovation by Microsoft mm-hmm. and how everything is now decoupled, right? You have uh, universal resource scheduling, field service, project service, uh, customer experience, everything is now decoupled yep. into, into solutions so that we're starting to see more rapid um innovation and rapid deployment of fixes and not just fixes, but in enhancements and additional functionality. Um, and it really is, I think is, uh, it's setting the trend, something I really haven't seen in the CRM space in, in quite some time. And, and I've been around, so, um, it's definitely an exciting time if you are a D365 customer or, uh, an implementer or, or, you know, even a, a third party vendor right. that's uh, hooking into it. I mean, it's just, it's amazing what they're, what they're producing and, and shipping out. 
yeah, it, it's it it is insane how quickly um, the functionality is coming out, uh, especially in not not only just bug fixes, but you know some pretty pretty decent updates to the uh, capabilities yeah. in the UI. So, so yeah, so definitely check out the at your service uh, blog at at your service pod. That's P O D, all one word at your service pod dot com, and uh, we'll have a link. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. Um, so check it out out there and, um, we're going to launch from that going forward in our 2018 plan to really dive deeper into not only the capabilities of the three pillars that we service here on, uh, the, uh, at your service podcast, customer service, field service, project service automation, what we're going to do over 20, over the course of 2018 is we're going to incorporate a scenario in which a company is going to implement all three of these solutions. And we're, we're, what our goal is, is to try to do it in an informative and entertaining way so that you can see what questions we ask in terms of how did we arrive to a certain decision, right? How do we, like, for example... Uh, how am I, how do we structure a subject tree? How do we decide how to, how to build our product catalog? Um, things of that nature. Um, we're going to go into those kind of discussions and give you a little peek behind the curtain and, and understand how do you make those decisions? What comes into play in those decisions? And um, what are really the best practices in implementing the three major solutions. Additionally, we're going to throughout the year t- reach out and talk to a number of uh, different guests uh, from different vendors, different people in the community, other MVPs. Um, so I think w- if everything, if all stars align and everything works out the way I'm hoping, what you'll see is one episode a month will be focused on our scenario. The other episode will be a, uh, a guest or some kind of uh, interview of uh, co- uh, you know that other content. Um, you're also going to be able. To, you're also going to see uh, our diva time segment just get better and better. Um, Sarah's really uh, bringing a lot uh, with that segment, and we have a lot of people really excited about that segment. So I'm happy to see that flourish. Um, and what I'm hoping also is, especially, and this is really. Uh, great to talk about, especially on this episode, given our sponsorship this week by uh, CRMUG, is I'm hoping that we're able to take this this experience through the podcast, through the the uh, the blog, as well as um, potentially, you know, we might even we might even start up a YouTube channel to add videos, um, or we may partner with our uh, partners over uh at crm audio and and you know work something out there but we haven't decided that but there's definitely going to be a video component to some of this um so what i what i'm hoping we can do is take all of that and bring it to the user group through local chapter meetings through the special interest groups um and just through um Serum UG as a whole, and you you know you really tap into that uh, community and 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 help it help it really grow. So um, I'm excited about 2018. There's it's it's a big offering. It's a it's a it's ambitious. It makes me nervous talking about it because <laughs> because I'm just hoping we we can pull it off. But um, I would really love your ideas out there. If there's if there are customer service um, questions that you'd like to see us tackle, um, if there are field service questions you'd like to see us tackle, project service um, automation questions you'd like to see us tackle throughout this year, please reach out to us at voice at crm.audio and let us know, um, or you know you, you know send us a, a tweet uh, on uh, Twitter uh, or reach out to us on LinkedIn, but. Um, it, 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 no matter what, uh, I'm hoping that um, this is going to be a, a fun journey for all of us. And uh, we're going to kick this off in February 
with customer service. So um, we'll start our we'll start where it all right. started. Customer exactly. Service. And we're going to we're going to take uh, our, our scenario. Will obviously, it, well, I don't want to say obviously our scenario will be online based. It won't be on premise, um, but it will be online. And uh, we'll we'll identify the scenario with our customer, our fictitious company and what their needs are and requirements. And and I'm excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully we can incorporate some of the other CRM audio hosts uh, to to get involved and uh, do some cross promotion. And, you know, because it was always fun when you'd, uh, you know, see like Mork and, Min, you know, Mork on Happy Days. God, I'm showing I'm showing exactly. how old I am right now. Um Rest in peace, Mork. Exactly. So, you know, hopefully we can do something fun like that. Uh, maybe with the gang over to implement this, Britta and, and Matthew, yeah. that'd be fun. But, um, well, yeah, I mean, you bring up a, a fantastic point, Sean. I mean, in incorporating everybody else, uh, different groups, because Dynamics 365, as we know, um, has the capability to have this broad reach within the, within the Microsoft ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Right. So flow and, uh, you know, uh, we, we know about groups now and, and uh, Power BI and OneNote. And I mean, there's just so many different things. And if you look at project service, you got uh, Microsoft Project, you got Project Web. It's just it's ever reaching these, I, I guess, tentacles, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just it's exciting. Yeah. And so the possibilities of what we are going or hoping to bring to our listeners this this year is extremely exciting yep. to me. And, and, and as a no, guide, no. we're going to start with, uh, when we start this up in February, we're going to start with the framework of, well, not the framework. We're going to start by looking at the docs.microsoft.com and what that experience is and, and start that as our launch spot, right? So, because we want to incorporate all the different potential areas where, where, our listeners and the community as a whole can get information. We want to make sure that you guys know where to go to find important information about the three pillars, customer service, field service, project service automation. Um, Whether it's our content or not, that doesn't matter. I don't really care about that. It's uh, if we, if we can add content, you know, generate new content that's helpful. Fantastic. If we can work with others to, uh, to link to their existing content, I'm excited about that too. Um, but it's, you know, it's it, I, hopefully in the end, we can really have a, a solid compendium of information on the functional aspects of implementing uh, the service management components. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, I think it's it's more of a we plan on on giving and, and providing that Christmas feeling all throughout <laughs> the year by giving you back. Betcha. You betcha. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm uh, I'm, I'm excited about 2018. Uh, 2017 was amazing uh, for us with uh, the, the birth of the podcast. And um, uh, I'm excited to see us uh, just go further. And, um, and it, again, if there's topics you want to hear us talk about, if there's things that you want to see us write about, um, if there's a video you'd like to, to see us, uh, create, please let us know. Um, we're, we're open, we're ready. We want to, we want to innovate. So, um, absolutely. I think that that's, yeah, fantastic. And, and again, look at the, the uh, at your service pod.com site. Uh, we actually just posted another blog today. Very nice. So we are, are constantly uh, providing updates. And today's one is, uh, you know, we talked about universal resource scheduling. I know Sarah has uh, provided one and uh, on customer service and today's actually covers uh, project service at a high level. And uh, so it provides some great content. I know that a lot of our listeners uh, potentially aren't extremely familiar with project service. I know it's it's gaining momentum in the uh, out there in the various organizations, uh, but there's still a lot of folks that may not be aware of the capabilities and what, when, and where and how we should use it. 
Uh, so hopefully that that blog posted today will will give you a little bit of insight to go and and go find some additional information and start learning more about it. And, and you and you go in one thing I really like, and I'm not going to spoil it, right? Because I want once you go to the once you go to the site and check out the article, Scott worked hard on it. But uh, one thing I really like about it is you're you're not only talking about what is project service automation and what are some of the key features, but you also go into who it's best suited for, right? Which is important yeah. because, you know, it's not going to work for everyone. Not every, no. every solution doesn't work for everybody, right? So I, I'm not naive enough to say, oh, every dynamic solution is going to be perfect for everyone. No matter what industry, no matter it, that's that's a little short sighted, a little naive. But um, I like how you go into that, and it's a it's a really well done article. So I encourage everybody yeah. to check that out. Yeah, I, th- I think the big thing that folks will will, will get from it is uh, it de- a lot of it, it depends, right? And that's the, the answer that unfortunately we have to give a lot of times within the consulting world is if we're provided with some, some sort of vague question, well, it depends. We need to dive into that deeper and, and, and really make that evaluation, right? And, you know, we don't want to uh, put a, a square peg in a round hole. And, and just make right. it fit. Right. Um, there are scenarios where project service works. There's scenarios where it really you shouldn't you shouldn't go that way. You know. And then of course one of the things is, hey, project service versus field service. Right. Uh, they're very closely related, and and we get asked that a lot of from our customers. You know, is this should this be a project? Should this be a work order? Should this be this? Should be should this be something else? I talk about that mm-hmm. in the blog uh, at a high level. So. Go out there and, and take a look at it again and, uh, you know, provide me your thoughts. If you have a, additional details you'd like to see written up, um, you know, make some comments. Contact me. I'm more than happy to to put a uh, look at your thoughts and ideas and, and share them with uh, the greater right. community. Right. And, you know, it, and, uh, bef- you know, we're getting we're getting to that time. And I think, you know, what time that is. Um, don't say it yet. But uh you know, our, our, uh, I wanted to throw this out there. Um, our, uh, our good friend, Sarah was on, uh, Gus Gonzalez, uh, CRM MVP podcast, uh, this week. Uh, and her and Ulrich Carlson had a really great discussion, um, about customer service. They went into, to ITIL. Um, it was, you know, it was a great conversation. I'm not going to spoil it. But, uh, you know, I know uh, it's 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 not our podcast, but, you know, it, Gus Gus has a great podcast. So take a listen to that CRM MVP podcast with with Sarah and um, Ulrich and uh, Ulrich's CRM chart guy. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was a fun it was a fun listen. So glad to see uh, glad to see our our buddy Sarah out there and about getting her name out there. Absolutely. Sarah's, uh, Sarah's great. She has a lot of uh, knowledge um, and wisdom to share with us all and uh, uh, definitely enjoy working with her on this podcast and, and look forward to a, a, a successful 2018. And you know, uh, it's as if the ball's dropping a second time. Yeah, I, I think, I think it here it is. Can you hear it? 10, 9, I can. 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Diva time! There it is. Unified Service Desk. Really great feature. Diva time! Yes, it is that time. Once again, it is Diva time. And it's a new year. 2018 diva time and as always we have our our resident dynamics 365 diva sarah jelinek sarah how you doing i'm doing fabulous sean how are you i'm i'm fantastic and you know what today we have a a straggler not normally is this a three chair uh extravaganza with diva time but uh scott wanted to uh participate in the greatness that is the diva so i said I said that's fine. As long as you're quiet, you can attend. <laughs> so I will be quiet. 
So I, no, I, no, I don't want to so, be so, I wanted to talk. No, you, yeah, this is interactive, Scott. This is interactive. Uh, so glad to have you, Scott. Yeah, glad to be here. So, so, uh, so, Sarah, what do we have on the plate for the new year for the first episode of Diva Time of 2018? Well, the first topic I wanted to talk about in 2018 is Unified Service Desk. So when you hear Unified Service Desk in our customer service at your service type of world, what's Mm -hmm. the first thought that comes to your guys' minds? Call center. Call center. Call center. (laughs) Call center. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unified Service Desk being kind of an agent application that really is uh, ideal for call centers. Well, right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what people tend to think. And it is a really great feature, a really great solution for organizations that are delivering customer service to utilize this, particularly if you have a call center, because we know call centers are really concerned about efficiency and cutting down the amount of time on every call so we can serve as many people as we need to, because it is expensive to have people on the phone and uh, delivering service. Whereas if you do it via email or self-service, you're cutting down a lot of your costs at that point. Um, and Unified mm-hmm. Service Desk is, as I mentioned, a great tool. It's, it's a configurable framework that we can basically take Dynamics 365 to the next level. Gives your people the capability to obviously work in Dynamics 365, working with your contacts, your accounts, your cases, your opportunities, your leads, whatever record you want to. And giving people that kind of 360 degree view. Now, I mentioned a couple of records that a customer service rep probably might not work with, and that is talking about your opportunities, your leads, and maybe some custom entities that you're working with. So with Unified Service Desk, I, I kind of want to open people's minds to think that it's not just for customer service. I, ideally, we love it for okay. working with cases, uh, being able to quickly open up a case, send emails to our customers, maybe have other third-party tools integrated with it that we can uh, look up information in another website, in another application, and not have to do a lot of clicking or manual work. It's a great feature for that. But if you want to look at an environment, Mm -hmm. setting up an environment for your customer or your users, I should say, which are kind of your customers, where you're really providing them some really guided experience, the capability to cut down the amount of time that they're spending working I think USD is a great tool for you to look at. Just as an example, think about when you're working with a sales opportunity. All right, based on that information you have on the opportunity, maybe you need to go look at a third party website and search for a particular product. All right, just being able to click on a button in USD and have it automatically open up that site, put that search criteria in for you, and look at that information saves your users a lot of time. Um, maybe if you're sending a lot of emails to customers and you want to have a standard language that you're going to uh, provide in that email, Unified Service Desk is a great tool for that. Um, can you guys guess how many clicks it takes to send an email with a template in Dynamics 365? Ooh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. So we're. <laughs> I'm going to guess four. Okay. Four? I'm, I'm going seven. Seven. Okay. It depends, right? Um, In some of the minimums that I've seen, it could be anywhere from seven to 14. Depends on what you're doing. Yes. (laughs) But but Scott's answer of four is a little bit more ideal when you're working with Unified Service Desk. All right. So he's looking ahead, John. So he can beat you. That's right. I'm I'm, I'm a visionary. (laughs) There it is. There it so, is. and what is, when I mentioned about using a template, think about it. You click to open up your email, you click insert template, and then if you're doing it on a case or on a contact, you have to choose which record you want to use that template for. Is it going to be a, a template for a case or is it a template specifically for the contact? All right, you pick the one for case, that's another click, brings up your list, click your template, click OK, click yes, I want to replace the subject. And then click send. Mm. Now, we've got some customers that have a lot more automation that we need to put in there, like automatically insert knowledge base articles and so forth. So that's a lot of clicks. And we know that sometimes they're not always that speedy. So Unified Service Desk gives us the capability to kind of intercept those types of events. To say, here's a list of templates. Pick one. It will automatically put everything in there for you. You don't have to click any prompts. 
and just you know, send that away. So for one customer utilizing Unified Service Desk, we cut down the amount of those clicks anywhere from 9 to 14 or 7 to 14 down to just four. And if you're dealing with mm. a call center, that can cut down a lot amount of time for you, and especially if you're just processing via email. So that's just one of the examples that Unified Service Desk is a great feature to use. Obviously, we talk about call centers, but think about other jobs that you might perform in your organization. If you're a salesperson, you're dealing with a particular type of uh, opportunity. If you're uh, maybe working with membership management and you need to go in and create records in other systems, being able to integrate that directly within your agent, uh, to be able to go in and have a tab open just for this customer, and then be able to manage all the screens you have open within a session and being able to keep that information straight. I'm one of those people that right clicks, open a new window, and hopefully can keep track of the 14 or 15 different web pages I have open and keep track of which ones they are for customers. It provides a great capability for you to organize that information. Let me ask a question. So this is kind of eye-opening, which is, I think, your intent, which is awesome. But now, it, would this mainly be if the the sales users are are using a, a PC or a um, like a Windows 10 tablet where they could get that full functionality? Or would do, have you seen cases where the 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 improved capability in UX is kind of um, they're missing that on a mobile experience because it's not as simple. In in this, yeah, in this example, um, you're right. In the in the mobile experience, you might not get quite the same experience as you would with Unified Service Desk. So, this is a, a client application that you do install locally on a machine, and you would launch that as opposed to launching your browser or launching an application, you'd launch this application and utilize this interface this way. So this would be, you know, if you're if you're kind of a, a desk jockey, so to speak, right. just working at your desk and working within the system. But because you're utilizing Dynamics 365 online or on premise, you know, the capability to still utilize that functionality in a mobile app, maybe not getting the same experience, but you'll still access the same system as that person that's sitting there utilizing USD. But I think this is a great example for, like, let's say um, a sales team, a junior sales team that are working like in a bullpen mm-hmm. where they're they're sitting in cubicles and they're on their PC all day and they're calling cold, they're cold calling leads and um, working opportunities. That, this could be a very good uh, application for them of that functionality. Absolutely. I mean, think of it. We have the capability of utilizing an agent script. So like we have our business process flows across the top of a record. Now with our agent script, we can actually go through and and click items to say, okay, I need to do this step. And not just to mark it as a checklist to say that we're done with it, but actually have an action happen as part of that. You know, if I'm trying to sell somebody a product, maybe I want to uh, search for them on Bing and see, all right, is there any news about them or anything that I can use to help, you know, more closely relate to that person or look at their information on LinkedIn, look at their social profiles, open that up within an appropriate web page really helps provide them that 360 degree view and gives them that guided step that they need to complete. When you are implementing Unified Service Desk, the great thing is you don't have to be a developer. Um, I am I'm what it, we'd probably call a hobby developer. I know how to code. I know how to write you know, some plugins. It might take me 10 times as long to do that. But with Unified Service Desk, you don't necessarily have to be a developer to deploy the solution. Uh, Unified Service Desk has some framework included with it, the the CTI computer telephony integration uh, that you can use to integrate Unified Service Desk with your existing system. So if if you want to integrate with your call system, with your phone system, um, having the capability to integrate that. So when you're calling someone, you're answering a call, having that information pop up, capturing that event, and maybe automatically opening up that person's contact record to save someone the the task of having to search for their name, for their phone number, their email address, having that will help provide your users a more seamless method to make sure that they're talking to the right person, that they've got the right details, and they're recording their information accordingly. So there's a lot of capabilities that Unified Service Desk has, uh, not just for a call center, for customer service department, but really any organization should potentially be able to use it. Have you seen Have you seen any any different type of integrations with with USD? Um, to to allow some of these features and functionalities and capabilities for 
uh, these sales type users without having to deploy the full USD? Or is that not even a, a possibility? So we're talking about uh, like, like the integration, like maybe with chat or phone to be able to utilize this without mm. using unified services. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. There's there's lots of vendors out there that have that capability. Um, you know, when we talk about maybe some vendors like Cafe X being able to to integrate kind of that omni-channel experience uh, with Dynamics 365, you could utilize that with or without USD with some of those capabilities. That's awesome. I'm excited. I'm learning a whole bunch about USD. I had no idea. Yeah, and, and uh, look for a blog article coming up to kind of talk about some of those examples and some of those features as well. Outstanding. I'm always glad to hear about the diva contributing to the at your service pod blog. So, um, what, any, any other items on, on USD that you wanted to touch on? No, I think I hit the big points. Uh, but if you do have any questions, obviously reach out to me, reach out to any of us and we'll be happy to try to find your answers for you. Very cool. I think that was a fantastic kickoff to the new year with diva time in USD. This, this guy learned some stuff. I'm not going to lie. I did. It was, uh, and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. It, my, my inquisitive nature made me go certain ways with, uh, with, uh, some of the, some of my thoughts, but, uh, that was, that was some really good stuff. So I'm looking forward to our next topic and, uh, we'll be back in like two weeks. Can you believe it's already January, 2018? It's crazy. Crazy. Exciting though. It is. And, uh, once again, it's been diva time. On behalf of myself, Sean Tabor, my co-host, Scott LaFonte, and the Dynamics 365 diva, Sarah Jelinek, we thank you for listening and subscribing to the podcast. You can reach us at voice at crm.audio. On Twitter, you can follow us, CRM Hobbit for me, for Scott, at FLD service underscore guru, and of course, at Dyne 365 diva for Sarah. For more information and content about what we spoke about on this episode and others, visit our blog at atyourservicepod.com. This has been At Your Service on the CRM Audio Network, a production of Dynamic Podcasts, LLC.